Greetings, my esteemed subscribing tones. Happy New Year. Now, I haven't made any New Year's resolutions per se, but I have decided something of a similar nature, and that is that I will make more book reviews in video format here on YouTube and Odyssey. Of course, in accord with your wishes, I am but your humble servant. I posted a poll to Telegram and the majority of you would like to see more book reviews in video format. So here we go. Here we go. And of course, we do start with, as you can surmise from the title of the video, the Poetic Edda. And we have a nice edition here. Admire the this absolute unit. Thick boy, big boy. Now, it's actually not that much to read because half of it or half of the poetry at least is in Icelandic so you can see there that uh, one page in the original Icelandic the other page in English now of course it contains this edition it contains a lot of you know explanations notes introductions that sort of um, stuff also as you can see a foreword by our man survive the jive good stuff so it's very much information in addition to the poetry itself. So the poetry section, half Icelandic, but the uh, introduction and everything like that, it's in English. So yeah, great stuff, great stuff indeed. Now, there are those who are much more knowledgeable when it comes to the Poetic Edda. This is the first time I read it. Now, of course, I've been familiar with the Sacred Havamal for many years, so it was nice to finally get to the source material. And I will say the following, this video, this is just my you know, first impressions on the book and uh, maybe I'll make a video in a few years when I've read it a few more times, meditated upon the, the poetry, certain stanzas, etc. Now, what I would say though, with this fine book right here is that it doesn't really give you any precise answers because what it is, this is written by Icelandic men in the Middle Ages, and they are, you know, the the poetry, the epics, the myths, they are much older, and they have been transmitted orally, so I don't know how much has been lost in translation, but what we can say, and this is only my view, this is only my first impression upon reading it, is that, you know, we can get a sense of the material, but can we pinpoint exactly everything? No, perhaps not, and, uh, you know, a lot of the extra information in the book is, you know, speculation. Could this stanza have been uh, mis, um, uh, misplaced or should this stanza belong somewhere else or stuff like that? So it's not a precise thing we're talking about here, but you can definitely read it if you want to get a good sense of the Germanic Weltanschauung, so the Germanic worldview. and. Just reading it without understanding exactly everything, we can see that certain things are, you know, always coming back to uh, the the storyline, no matter which poet or poem or um, story. So honor, war, love, vengeance, uh, knowledge, the gods, stuff like that. So we can get a good sense of what is important to. Um, to our ancestors. So that is something you can view it as if you read it for the first time to get a nice sense, a nice feel for the overall vibe uh, that uh, that comes to you. Now, something else I thought to mention, I want to take our beloved Lady Freya in defense here. It's quite common to hear heretics um, and Christians and uh, people to claim that she was promiscuous and there are, of course, certain myths that would support this, but there is a particular poem, the Loki Senna, and in this particular poem, it basically consists of Loki insulting the gods and the goddesses, and he says, and he says to Freya that, yeah, basically you are promiscuous, but he also says to the male gods, he accuses them of cowardice and unmanly behavior, and of course, None of the gods, at least not as far as I know, were cowardly or unmanly. Uh, so it would be Loki actively lying to provoke them. And the same thing would go for uh, for Freya. He says that to provoke her. So we can see a few things by reading this particular poem. That 
Um, unmanly behavior, cowardice for men, very bad. That is something you can insult others. So it's important to not be cowardly or unmanly. And for a woman then it's important to not be promiscuous. So we can actually see locus lies and insults as you know the opposite of the ideal so that Freya would be promiscuous um, doesn't really hold up if you interpret it in uh, in that way I know there are other myths such as she's supposed to be to have slept with four dwarves but this can also esoterically be interpreted as you know her imbuing a certain piece of jewelry with the four elements something like that just top of my head coming up with something there so it doesn't really mean that but if you read it too literally you can construct a narrative to fit your agenda and of course this was very useful for the early Christians to try to portray a goddess as promiscuous and uh, modern feminists could also do it but for a sincere devoted pagan that um, honors Freya we should of course defend her um, in that regard but again I'm not an expert I'm just speculating I'm just uh, sharing some something I found in uh, in this fine tome of knowledge now that about how you can interpret the certain myths at least and of course I need to defend our, uh, our lady Freya here now something else and probably you saw this on social media I posted my uh, one of my favorite um, stanzas, or two stanzas rather, and I will read it, and I will read them to you now as well, so that you can admire the beautiful poetry. Now, I didn't actually quote Bellows word for word, because I replaced certain words to make it more epic, and I will do so now as well. So here is my take on it. I know that I hung on the windy tree, hung there for night's full nine. With a spear I was wounded, and offered I was, to Odin, myself to myself, on the tree that none may ever know what root beneath it runs. Neither horn they upheld, nor handed me bread, and there below I looked. I took up the runes, screaming I took them, and forthwith back I fell. How about that? Absolutely epic. This is poetry at its very best. I will make a separate video on how to appreciate poetry but basically my point is that you need to find these very epic moments that you know conjures up a really really nice image in your head that you can just keep with you so I I can't stop thinking about these two stanzas very powerful indeed so Odin hung himself he offered himself to himself for nine nights to gain the knowledge of the runes now anyway I have rambled on enough about this I could of course talk a lot more about it um, read it for yourself if you feel so inclined view it as a good source material if you want to get really deep into it then of course if you are uh, a beginner if you don't know where to start this might be a bit too too heavy you can read uh, or you know get familiar with myths in uh, in different ways um, if you feel that's um, an easier step to begin with now also I would like to say that this is an edition by Imperium Press. This video is not sponsored in any way, but it's a good publisher and I'm comfortable in uh, promoting them because they do great work with our great classics. And of course, the um, speaking of which, you have a rather controversial poem, the Rig Stula, where uh, Heimdall goes around and uh, he creates the different uh, casts. I will not say more about it here, since uh, this is on YouTube as well, but yeah, it's a bit controversial, but it appears as it should here, so uh, they haven't done any any funny alterations to the story, which perhaps you could find in, uh, in different publishers because of political reasons. No, anyway, that being said, I have a Wild Hunt Challenge video incoming in a week or so. Stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. Full steam ahead this year. Good times, good stuff. No, thank you for watching. XXO, boom.